today, let's study the words of God with the sermon titled The Order of Aaron and the Order of Melchizedek. Let's take a look at the book of Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11. If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it, the law was given to the people, why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron? The Levitical priesthood and the order of Aaron mean the same thing. Aaron is a Levite and the first high priest. That's why in the Bible, the Levitical priesthood and the order of Aaron are used interchangeably. Why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron? For when there is a change of the priesthood, there must also be a change of the law. There is a change of the law. But it does not mean that the Sabbath day changes into Sunday. It means the priesthood changes from the order of Aaron to the order of Melchizedek. In other words, the Old Covenant changes into the New Covenant, right? What we need to know for sure in our faith is the order of Melchizedek. To understand the priesthood of Melchizedek, we need to know the priesthood of Aaron as well. Then, we can clearly understand the order of Melchizedek. For some of you who hear this for the first time, this subject may be difficult because the terms are new to you. But let's continue. The Bible said, when there is a change of the priesthood, there must also be a change of the law. Let's see chapter 8, verse 7. For if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, in other words, if the first covenant had been faultless, no place would have been sought for another. What is another covenant? It is the new covenant, right? Because there was something wrong with the old covenant, that is, the order of Aaron, another covenant, that is, the new covenant, in the order of Melchizedek was needed. Let's continue with verse 8. But God found fault with the people and said, The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make, what? Make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. When we understand the relationship between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, we can explain well to people how we can be saved on the base of these two covenants. They make all the truths of the New Covenant that we keep, such as the Sabbath and the Passover, look like the Old Covenant that are abolished and unnecessary to be observed. They frequently hinder the gospel work that way. If we fail to have a full understanding about the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Order of Aaron and the Order of Melchizedek, we may be deceived by them. It is just as Eve was tempted when she didn't know the correct meaning of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and of the tree of life. Because there had been something wrong with the first covenant. God gave us what covenant? The new covenant. Because there had been something wrong with the order of Aaron, God gave us the order of whom? The order of Melchizedek. Because there was some lack in the Levitical priesthood. God has given us the truth of the new covenant in the order of Melchizedek. This is what the Bible teaches us. Let's continue with verse 9. It would not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. 
because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. Hebrews chapter 7, 8, and 9 explain in continuation how we can receive eternal salvation through the new covenant, not through the old covenant that has disappeared. Then, we should clearly distinguish the new covenant from the old covenant. When it comes to the Sabbath, some may hinder the gospel with just one word, Sabbath. They use the word without making a distinction between the old covenant and the new covenant. But there is the Sabbath of the Old Covenant and the Sabbath of the New Covenant as well, right? There is a Sabbath that belongs to the Order of Aaron. And there is also the Sabbath that belongs to the Order of Melchizedek. It is the same with the Passover. There is the Passover observed in the Levitical priesthood and is also the Passover observed in the Order of Melchizedek. The way to conduct the ceremony is different from each other. In the Levitical priesthood, that is, in the order of Aaron, all the offerings are animal sacrifices. On the contrary, all the offerings in the order of Melchizedek are the body of Christ. This is the great difference in conducting the ceremonies. All of us must clearly understand this. We must surely understand this. When God said the law was abolished, He meant that the order of Aaron, that is, the laws of the Old Covenant were abolished. He did not mean that the laws of the New Covenant were abolished. We should clearly distinguish the New Covenant from the Old Covenant and know how the two are different in the priesthood and the way to conduct ceremonies. Then, when somebody asks you, if the law is all abolished, you can give him a clear answer that the law that is abolished is the law of Moses, the Levitical law, belonging to the order of Aaron. Let's see how Levitical priesthood and the priesthood of Melchizedek are different in Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24, verse 27. Verse 12, The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain. Which mountain is it? It is Mount Sinai. And stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commands I have written for their instruction. The place where God proclaimed the regulations of sacrifices and offerings in the Levitical priesthood, that is, in the order of Aaron, was Mount Sinai. Let's move to chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34, verse 1 reads, The Lord said to Moses, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and then come up to where? Come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there, on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones, and went up where? Went up Mount Sinai early in the morning. Moses went up Mount Sinai, received the law from God, and came down. 
Where did God proclaim the law in the Levitical priesthood, the law in the order of Aaron? It was Mount Sinai. However, Mount Sinai is not the only place God proclaimed the law. God prophesied that He will proclaim the law in another place too. Let's see Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways so that we may walk in His paths. The law will go out from where? From Zion. In the previous verses, where was the law in the order of Aaron proclaimed? On Mount Sinai. But here is another law. Where is this law proclaimed? In Zion, it is proclaimed. This is the difference between the order of Aaron and the order of Melchizedek. Although the word law is the same, the law in the order of Aaron and the law in the order of Melchizedek are different from each other. The offerings are different. The blessings of God are different. And the works of God are different. All the sacrifices in the order of Aaron are a copy and shadow, whereas all the sacrifices in the order of Melchizedek are the reality. Although the same term, the Sabbath day, is used in the order of Aaron and in the order of Melchizedek, the way to keep it is totally different. In the Law of Moses, they slaughter lambs. They sacrifice lambs in the morning and in the afternoon, according to the times to offer sacrifices. What about us today? Do we slaughter lambs to keep the Sabbath day, in the morning and in the afternoon? No. We worship in spirit and in truth on the Sabbath. If you take this as the difference between the order of Aaron and the order of Melchizedek, it will be a great help for you to distinguish the two laws, the two orders. And the places where the laws were proclaimed were different, right? One was on Mount Sinai, and the other was in Zion. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. So Christ also did not take upon Himself the glory of becoming a high priest. Speaking of Aaron, he was the first high priest in the Levitical priesthood. However, the Bible says the high priest in the order of Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. Let's see verse 5 again. So Christ also did not take upon Himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today, I have become your father. And He says in another place, You are what? You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, although Jesus was son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be what? To be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This means that when we worship God in the order of Melchizedek, that will be the everlasting worship and complete service. In Genesis chapter 14, let's see the appearance of Melchizedek and see with what Melchizedek asked God for blessings. Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. After Abram returned from defeating Ketelomer and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Sheveh, that is, the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out what kind of sacrifice? 
bread and wine. He was who? He was priest of God Most High. As the priest of God, he should have offered animals' blood to worship God. But Melchizedek was unique. He brought very special offerings to bless Abraham. What were they? They were bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abraham through bread and wine. Then, why did God explain that Jesus Christ is the high priest in the order of Melchizedek? About Melchizedek, let's study more in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. On the first day of the Feast of Eleven Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? We know very well that this is the scene of keeping the Passover. As we've read these words many times, let's move on to verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks. What is in this cup? Wine. Where in the book of Genesis did we see bread and wine? Who brought out the offerings of bread and wine? Melchizedek brought out these offerings. And now who is doing exactly the same as Melchizedek did? Jesus is conducting the ceremony with bread and wine. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, which contains the wine of the Passover, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Everyone, now, does it make sense that Jesus is called the high priest in the order of Melchizedek? We can find similarities between the scenes in Matthew chapter 26 and Genesis chapter 14, verse 17, can't we? What offerings did they use? They used the same offerings, bread and wine. The Bible says that Jesus was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Then, what did Jesus do with the bread and wine? Let's go to Luke chapter 22 and find the answers to some questions we had in the book of Hebrews. Luke chapter 22, verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Just as in the Gospel of Matthew, the preparation for the Passover was recorded in the Gospel of Luke 2. Let's go to verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is, what covenant? The new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The covenant established in the order of Melchizedek is the new covenant. And the covenant established in the order of Aaron is the old covenant. The Bible said that the Old Covenant is disappearing, but the New Covenant is everlasting, and its priesthood is a permanent priesthood. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 18. And where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. Making use of this verse, they say, Look, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin, so we no longer need any worship. What is the use of keeping the Passover or the Sabbath? They lie in this way. He craftily slanders us. Brothers and sisters, 
Let us look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Then we can get the clear answer to it. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. By the law of Moses, that is, by the order of Aaron, we cannot be made perfect. With the blood of animals, our sins cannot be forgiven fully. With the blood of animals, our salvation cannot be made perfect. Only after Christ, who is the reality of the blood of animals, came to the earth and shed His blood, our redemption can be made perfect and the forgiveness of sins can be made complete. That's why it is said perfection cannot be attained through the order of Aaron. Let's see verse 2. If it could, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins because it is what? It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Through the Levitical priesthood, through the law of Moses, all our sins cannot be taken away. It is impossible to take away sins. Why? Because it is a copy and shadow. Shadow cannot perform the role of reality fully. Through shadow, we can merely figure out the form and shape of the reality. Let's suppose there is a shadow of a loaf of bread. No matter how much you eat the shadow, can you be full? Never. What should we eat to be full? We have to eat the real bread, don't we? It is the same with the forgiveness of sins. It is impossible to take away sins through the sacrifice in the shadow and copy. So the order of Melchizedek appeared. As the priesthood has changed, there is no more need for sacrifice done by the law of Moses. This is the meaning of Hebrews chapter 10. Let's look at verse 5. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, He said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for Me. Jesus Christ was sacrificed on the cross. Then, do we still need shedding the blood of animals, such as sheep or goats? We no longer need such sacrifice. However, those who oppose God's commands keep mentioning this one verse. Look at this. Isn't it written? that there is no longer any sacrifice for sins? Are they right? It is Apostle Paul who wrote the book of Hebrews. Wherever Apostle Paul went, he made known the order of Melchizedek, saying, I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. This is the sacrifice we must offer. This is the worship we must keep. We no longer need the sacrifice of Aaron but we need to keep the worship service of Melchizedek until Jesus comes. Apostle Paul emphasized that. Who wrote 1 Corinthians? What about the book of Hebrews? Apostle Paul who said, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins, emphasizes a lot here that we must keep the sacrifice. We must understand what this means. He meant that we no longer need the sacrifice to get the forgiveness of sins in the order of Aaron. The order of Aaron was just a copy and shadow of the order of Melchizedek. As the reality came, we no longer need the copy. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from whom? From the Lord. He said he passed on to them what he received from the Lord. Now let us have a close look at what he is now passing on to them. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, 
took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. What does it mean? Do we have to keep it or not? We must keep and put it into practice. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is what? This cup is the new covenant in my blood. What should we do with this? He told us to do this. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until when? Until He comes. Eating this bread and drinking this cup refer to a certain worship service. What is it? It is the worship service of the Passover. It refers to the Passover feast. When Apostle Paul said, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins, did he mean that we don't need to keep the Passover? No. He didn't mean that the new covenant is no longer needed, but he meant that we don't need the way of getting the forgiveness of sins through the old covenant. So, what kind of worship service has been given to us now? The worship service of Melchizedek. That worship way should be kept until when? Until He comes. It means that we should keep it regularly. It never means that we don't need to keep it. Let's see one more verse. John chapter 13, verse 15. I have set you what? Set you an example. That you should what? You should do as I have done for you. Is the Passover a sacrifice or not? According to the book of Exodus, it is written, this is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord. It is a sacrifice to God. Jesus set an example of keeping the Passover. Before keeping the Passover, what example did He set first? He set an example of washing the feet of His disciples. Let's see what happened in this scene. Verse 4. So He got up from the meal, took off His outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around His waist. After that, He poured water into a basin and began to wash His disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around Him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, what happens? You have no part with me. Even for no feet washing alone, Jesus said, You have no part with me. He meant, you cannot be saved. Apostle Paul said, I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. He did as he had received from the Lord. Apostle Paul said, we must keep it until Jesus comes. Where else can we see the same scene? Let's look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. The book of Corinthians was written long after Jesus was resurrected and ascended to heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Get rid of the old yeast, that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep what? Keep the festival. What festival is this? It is the Passover feast. Another version of the Bible says, let us celebrate our Passover. Then, is there no problem even though we don't keep God's laws and regulations? We must keep them, right? The ceremony for the forgiveness of sins with the blood of bulls and goats has ended. The law of the Old Covenant is now over because we cannot get the forgiveness of sins through it. Christ, who is the reality, came to the earth. So, we must keep the law of the forgiveness of sins that Christ established. 
In Matthew chapter 5, too, it is written, Do not think, I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to do what? To fulfill them. If you don't know the meaning of sacrifice to God and distinguish between the order of Aaron and the order of Melchizedek, you cannot realize whose worship law you are following, although you keep the Passover and the Sabbath today. I have seen such a poor case. So now, I am telling you earnestly. Lastly, I ask you never to lose the truth you take hold of, so that you can receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of heaven. I would like to finish today's sermon. Grace be to you from God. Thank you very much.